Hey there, Atlas Blade here. And we're back in Samaro. Yeah, present. Uh, I'm set to call to Catherine. Come on, let's go. Let's just talk to Catherine. <laughs> Ad Astra Abyssosk. Hello, Traveler and Paimon. Hello, Catherine. Catherine. We're used to this. We need your help with something. Yep. Understood. We're not even questioning how the she got here. The Adventurer's Guild is always ready to serve you. With what do you require assistance? <gasps> I've actually forgotten. It's been so long. <laughs> we want to meet with Lesser Lord Oh, yes, Nali. that. Do you know a way we can do that? Yep. You two wish to meet with Sumeru's Archon. Understood. Please wait. <laughs> Are we just gonna stand? Is she going like, people, people? <laughs> information I gathered. I apologize, but I am unable to call up any relevant information. Did she in even Akasha. leave? Did, was she just staring at us? I'm also unable to locate any oh, pertinent information in my personal memory. Oh yeah. Aww, another dead end. Well, if Catherine can't help us, then we really don't know anyone else to ask now. Please do not worry. I may know of someone who can help you too. Is it someone I know and may have pulled once? In Sumeru. The Adventurous oh. Guild does not serve as the vanguard of information. Rather, there are numerous active mercenary groups collectively known as the Aramites. Yeah, I've killed a bunch of them. They take on various contracts and work all across Sumeru, so they naturally accrue intelligence. An Aramite brigade called the Corps of Thirty is in charge of Sumeru of City's gotcha. defenses. Not only are they the oldest brigade, but they are responsible for managing and coordinating the affairs of all other mercenary brigades. Four of thirty? What a weird name. Hmm. Supposedly, they are named as such because their ranks numbered thirty at their inception. Okay. Osmond, an advisor with the Corps of Thirty. Okay, someone I don't know yet. With the Adventurers Guild. Though he's already retired, he and his words carry great weight within mercenary circles. Uh, okay. If you'd like to get in contact with him, you can find him at the Corps of Thirty's headquarters, the Citadel of Regzar. Thanks a bunch, Catherine. You're welcome. I wish you two the best of luck. We look forward to your exploits in Sumeru. I look forward to my exploits too. Ooh, is this where I'm trying to go? Looks like it. I'm not sure. We'll see. What am I, try what am I trying to find? <laughs> I was gonna say. I was already through the door. Come on, consistency. Welcome. Oh, uh, this is Asphon. Guild told me to expect you to. Uh, it's nice to be expected. It's nice to meet you, Asphon. We'd like to ask you about something. Mm-hmm. I guess we just asked him. I see. So, Catherine's the one who sent you this way. Ha! <laughs> it's true that the Aramites' network is vast, but even I can't help you meet the Dendro Archon. Do I just barge in at the some Wait, point? seriously? That's it? Yep. <laughs> Afraid so. The Aramites aren't terribly religious. So we don't know much about divinities. As far as the Akasha goes, we can access even less than you. Yeah. We originally came from the desert. The gods there died off long ago. Since those days, we've used our own two hands to carve out a living. We don't beg gods for their aid. Damn. It isn't just us, though. If you ask me, I think most in Sumeru aren't interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. They do call her Lesser Lord. <laughs> oh? Why is that? Just take the Academia, for example. They're the ones who truly rule Sumeru. Although they believe in gods, most of them only care for the late greater Lord Rugadavada. In their eyes, she was the one who founded Sumeru and gifted us with the Akasha. Lesser Lord Kusanali just happened to inherit her legacy. Because of the Academia's influence, most citizens are more familiar with Greater Lord Rukadavada and hold her in greater esteem. Damn. Not to mention that Lesser Lord Kusanali never makes an appearance, and the Academia never announces anything about her. As far as the people of Sumeru are concerned, she's just a god that exists. And that's all. Ow. Really? After hearing all of that, Paimon sort of feels bad for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Ha! <laughs> but who knows? We're all just guessing when it comes down to it. Besides, I'm sure the God of Wisdom doesn't worry about her reputation among people like us. Alright, well, thanks for the info, Osfan. 
again? Yeah, still back to zero. <laughs> no problem. Always happy to help out the Adventurers Guild. Yep, yep. Question several people in Samara City. Oh. At least it's not forcing me to harass people this time. <gasps> Seems Osfond was right about most people's attitudes here. Mm hmm. Not only are they not interested in the Dendro Archon, they even say stuff like, if the Akasha doesn't think I should know, then I don't need to know about it. Damn. We've been asking Ignorance. For information nonstop ever since we got to Sumeru. But the harder we try, the more helpless everything seems. Isn't there at least one person in this entire city who cares about Lesser Lord Kusanali? Oh, uh, you two are interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali? And who are you? Huh? Who are you? Exactly. From the sound of it, you two are outlanders who recently arrived here. You've been asking around for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Dunyar Zod, one of Lesser Lord Kusanali's faithful followers. Oh. Whoa, really? Then do you know how we can meet with her? I'm afraid I can't help you with that. But your conversation earlier did happen to remind me of a legend about the Dendro Archon. Can you tell us? Sure. It goes like this. Long, long ago, there was a man who heard a prophecy. It predicted that a great calamity was about to befall him. Panicked by what he heard, the man sought out the Dendro Archon in hopes that she would bless him. With the wisdom to help him escape his predicament. Mm -hmm. The man journeyed across deserts and through rainforests and experienced tribulations of every kind. However, he still couldn't find any trace of the Dendro Archon. In despair, he thought, alas, the Archon has abandoned me. He then had no choice but to sorrowfully resign to his fate. Are you telling me to walk into the desert and just die there? Okay, and then what happened? And then the calamity came. But to his own surprise, the man felt somehow emboldened by the trials of his journey. By relying on his own strength, he managed to overcome the adversity. At that moment, a bird perched upon his shoulder. This bird was, in fact, an avatar of the Dendro Archon. She said, O oh, Archon Seeker, do you now understand? She and her wisdom have long been found by you. Oh, God. Along your journey, we were in every flower and blade of grass, every ray of sparkling sun, and every breath of dancing wind. So long as you continue to think and ponder, we'll be wherever you go. Ah, uh, cool story, bro. Yeah, thanks for the story! Paimon feels all warm and fuzzy inside after that. Yeah, but didn't really help me. <laughs> uh, in a way, it seems like this story is also one of the Dendro Archon's avatars. Are you one of the Dendro Archon's avatars? Bless her, Lord Kusanali. What's going Can on? Can you tell us anything else about her? Of course. So did you two know that, uh, uh I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but it seems something's come up now. Uh, let's chat another day. Oh, what's going on? Threatened? Are those guys bothering you, Dinyarazard? Hey, wait! Uh, what the heck just happened? I think it has something to do with those people over there. It looks like they're searching for someone. Hmm. Dunyarzad was acting super nervous just now. You think they're looking for her? Mm, no. Ugh, this stinks! We finally managed to find a lead about Lesser Lord Kusanali! We can't let them get in the way now. <sighs> Let's see if we can get rid of them. Then we can catch up with Dunyarzad. I'm just gonna start a fight in the middle of the square. Okay. Hey, have you two seen a brown-haired girl wearing a purple top and a long blue dress? We're looking for her. Did she have bandages wrapped around her wrists? Yes, that's her. Did you see which direction she went? Uh, she jumped into the river. Follow her. Uh, yeah, she went that way. Quick, after her. Marua. I didn't even ask for his name. The story just gave me. <laughs> that should keep him busy for a while. Let's hurry and find Dunyar's on. Yeah, let's, uh, let's chase a young woman in the middle of the night. That sounds good. Where? 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 Okay. Big golden square. It's pointing me? Oh, wait, there she is. <laughs> hey, girl! There you are, Dunyarzad! We thought you might have been long gone by now. Terrible hiding spot. I mean, I did not see you the first time, but still. Oh, it's you two. Oh, you startled me there. You can relax now. We threw those people looking for you off the trail. 
<laughs> really? Oh, thank you so much. Unfortunately, I believe there's still more of them out there looking for me. Why don't you just leave town? I guess that's a bad idea, too. Uh-oh. Looks like there are some coming this way. We gotta go. What? More of them? Then what are we standing here for? Run! Yep. No, wait. I, uh, my body isn't in the best shape. Uh, it's difficult for me to run. How about we find some place to hide? Okay, sounds good. There's a tavern on the other side of the port we can go to. They probably wouldn't expect me to hide in a place like that. Yeah, nobody expects... A criminal to hide in the tavern. All right, let's move out. Stay behind us. We'll keep an eye out for anyone looking for you. Oh, is this a sneaking mission? Is she not gonna be with me in the team when I'm speaking? It's totally a sneaking mission. Oh wait, no, it's not. I just go there. I could probably just teleport there. Yep. Oh, Lambat's tavern. Yeah, nobody's gonna look for her here. Ooh. Yeah, I've been here lots of times. I know it, this place looks <sighs> great. I've been it. here. Oh, they shouldn't be able to find us now. Wait, stand down, Dia. Oh, Dia, hey. Finally, someone I know. <sighs> yeah. Can we speak? My lady, who are these two? Oh. They're travelers that I met on the street just a moment ago. They happened to notice that you were all searching for me, so they helped me hide. I see. In that case, you two should scram. There's nothing here for you. Damn. Okay. Wait a sec. Who the heck are you? And why are you shooing us away? I'm Miss Dunyarzad's bodyguard, here to see that she returns home safe and sound. <sighs> My lady, let's get going. You've been gone for so long that your parents are worrying themselves sick. And if I refuse to go with you? It'd be easier for the both of us if you cooperated. But if you insist on not going, then I'll have to carry you like a sack of potatoes. Damn. Hey, Dunyarzad already said she doesn't want to go back. Why are you still pushing her? Stay out of this. You don't understand the situation. Sorry, my lady. Even though I'm your bodyguard, your parents are my employers. I have to answer to them. How much? Wait, what? How much more do I have to pay you to become your employer? So you never listen to my parents ever again. Double? A triple? Give me some time and I'll get that much. My lady, this isn't about Mora. I don't know what you think of us Aramites, but let me say this. I like Mora, but I'll never go against my principles. That's why I'm here looking for you. Sure, it's an order from my employer, but... My conscience was also telling me it's the right thing to do. Well, what's with the other Aramites looking for her then? Knowing your health, carelessly running around like this is gonna hurt you. For the sake of those who love you, don't be stubborn. No, you're wrong. I'm aware of my limits and I know what I'm doing. Honestly, the only people being stubborn right now are my parents. And they know perfectly well that it makes no difference if I'm at home or not. They still won't accept reality. And every time I bring this up, they just changed the subject. Dia, you've been living with us a long time already. This should be old news to you. <sighs> Dia, I know it hasn't been easy for mother and father, and I'm grateful for everything they've done for me. But there's someone else in this world I'm also grateful to. Uh, who's that? Because she saved me. The love I have for her is the same I have for my parents. This is my life and my last chance. So I want to do something meaningful. My lady, are you sure what you're doing now is meaningful? Yes, I'm sure. At least, it is to me. <sighs> Fine, I won't ask you to return home anymore. But let me make something very clear. I'm only doing this because I respect your determination, not because I agree with you. Thank you, Dia. <sighs> Sorry for being so rude just now. My nerves were acting up. And I even brought up your payment in such an offensive way. Uh, don't worry about it, my lady. I did say that I like Mora. Besides, that's our next topic of conversation. Today's little excursion caused such a ruckus that every single bodyguard at the estate was deployed. It wouldn't be easy to hide things from your old man. Since this definitely won't be your last escapade, here's a little tip. You should at least make it look like your room and things are still in order when you leave. Also, you'll need someone to cover you for when you're out and about. So, I'll let you hire me, my lady. This way, everyone wins. 
As for the pay, let's say mm, half of what your father pays me. We can settle the bill when we return to the estate. Okay, savvy okay. business. Deal. Yay! Looks like they've reached an understanding. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You all right? I'm fine, really. I, I just feel a little tired now that things have calmed down. Good. Can we stop <sighs> the exposition and do actually do something? Tough. We're already in a tavern, so let's rest up and grab some grub. Yeah, let's go. It's been a 13-minute exposition dump, so let's I'm go. Let's just keep too. going. If you don't mind, I'd like for you to join us. Great, good. At least get some food out of this. Sure. After you rest up, we want to hear more about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Yeah. Ah, <sighs> okay. Lombard. Well, if it isn't Dia, haven't seen you in nearly half a year. Damn. Word on the street is that you're a bodyguard for the Homayani family now. <laughs> Don't you find that kind of work boring? Nah, you get used to it. How about a menu over here? You got it. Huh? Isn't this little Miss Homayani herself? <laughs> we don't get to serve personages like you very often. We'll be sure to prepare our very best. Thank you, sir, but there's no need. I don't have a lot of mora on me, and I really ought to save as much as I can. Uh, but please bring these two the best food you have. Damn. They're my new friends, so I want to be a good host for them. Thanks. No need to break the bank. We'll eat whatever you order. Yeah, we're already super grateful for everything you told us about Lesser Lord Kusanali. How about our charcoal-baked Ajelena cakes? They're our signature snack, and they run cheap. Look. Other customers over there are eating some now. They're huge. What the heck? Uh, they look kind of burnt and dry. Uh, Paimon will pass. Picky Paimon, now that's a first. Hey, come on! Paimon has personal preferences too, you know. Okay, talk about the Lord. Dunyarzad, we asked a lot of people when we first arrived. Do I sound bored? Because I'm getting bored. In Lesser Lord Kusanali. Sorry. So, what made you want to follow her? Well, remember when you asked me if I knew how to meet the Dendro Archon? Even though I don't know how, I think I've actually seen her before. Okay, what have you been smoking? Huh? Really? Yes, it was when I was a child. At the time, my illness had kept me bedridden for the better part of a year. I was stuck inside and couldn't make any friends, and my parents did their best to find treatments for me. But even then, the Akasha didn't have any helpful information. My younger self no longer had any hopes or dreams. Damn. One flare-up was so bad that I was in a semi-conscious state for several days. Wow, that sucks. That, uh, that totally sucks. I'm so sorry. Then one night, I woke up alone in my room. I was terrified. Ooh. My body was paralyzed. Worse. Even if I cried, there was no sound. Damn, body paralysis. That's horrifying. At that moment, an ethereal voice spoke in my mind. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. Damn. Body paralysis is the worst. I've had that once. Don't be scared. You don't have to cry. Yeah, I've had body paralysis before. I woke up in the middle of the night, and I dreamt the room was filling up with water, and I couldn't move. That was... That was horrifying. <laughs> I woke up eventually, but damn. I was in a cold sweat. <laughs> Who are you? How do you know my name? Um, how do I explain this? You might not be able to understand, but actually, I knew everything about you. God, that sounds like something a stalker would say after they kidnap you. <laughs> really? Yeah. Of course. I know that you're scared of thunder, that you hate taking medicine every morning, and that you love counting the petals on your mom's skirt. Wow. You really do know everything. Junior is odd. Is there anything you want? What? Not really. I, I can't go anywhere or do anything. Huh? But aren't you a child? All children have wishes. Tell me what you want, and maybe I can make it happen. But uh, can you make my illness go away? Ooh. Oh. I'm sorry. But... I'm not powerful enough to do that right now. Hmm. Then, can you be my friend? What did she say? After that, the voice said, Okay. okay. 
I'll be your friend. Got it. Although my body was suffering during those days, that voice encouraged me and told me many wondrous things. Beyond my window was the flourishing Sumeru city. Beyond the city was a lush rainforest. And beyond that was the wall of Samiel. Deserts and all of Tevat. Uh-huh, been there, done that. Once I finally made it through that bout of illness, I couldn't hear that voice anymore. I told my mother about it, but she said that I must have been dreaming. But I know that that voice wasn't a figment of my imagination. Before that, I had never heard of Tevat. So you believe the voice you heard was the lesser Lord Kusanali? Yes, for sure. If it weren't for that voice, I would have never grown curious about the outside world. Nor would I have learned how to read and enjoy so many books. That voice sparked a desire for wisdom. It had to have been the Dendro Archon. Okay. I've been hoping for a chance to repay her kindness. In fact, I was running around today to help prepare the sub Festival for her. sub Festival? Damn. <laughs> What's the sub Zero's festival? Oh, I can hear a Sub-Zero. I'm sorry. It's Lesser Lord Cusinelli's birthday, which was the day that she was found by the sages. It's actually an old holiday that originally celebrated Greater Lord Rukadabata's birthday. When she passed away, the holiday eventually became a celebration of the Lesser Lord's birthday. I heard everyone was overjoyed when they welcomed her back to Sumeru. In those days, the festival was a huge deal. Nowadays, it's not. But because of the Academia's influence, people have gradually lost interest in the festival. The Academia actively participates in Sumeru's many holidays dedicated to Greater Lord Rukudabata. But when it comes to the sub Festival, forget any funding. They practically act like it doesn't exist. They must be... Maybe they see Lesser Lord joke, Kusinelli's birth as confirmation of Greater Lord Rukudabata's death. So they're reluctant to celebrate it. It is. It's absolutely terrible. Sure, the Greater Lord founded Sumeru, but hasn't Lesser Lord Kusanali been the one quietly protecting us for the past few hundred years? <clears throat> Just remember that we're still out in public. Don't get too carried away now. Ooh. I know that people over by the Grand Bazaar still hold the Sub-Zero's Festival to this day, but I hadn't met any of them before, so I was never able to contribute. But recently... I made a friend there who also follows Lesser Lord Kusanali. And who's that? I gave her my savings because I want her to throw a wonderful festival this oh, year. Oh, wait, actually. That's the least I could do for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hold on. Yeah. My lady, does this friend happen to be Nilu? Oh. The one who sends flowers to the estate? Yes, that's her. Hmm, I saw her leaving the other day with a nervous look on her face. It seemed like she was hiding something in her arms. Did you give her something? <laughs> she just said he gave her her life savings. Uh, yes. Uh, initially, I didn't have much more up prepared. So I had Nilu sell one of my skirts. Oh. I've agreed with Nilu to meet up at the Grand Bazaar today and see how things are coming along. Dia, would you accompany me? Yeah, okay. Sure. That's quite the trip, though. I'll carry you. Well, no, that would be too much. Damn. Even for you. You might as well just accept the lift. If I let you walk, who knows how long it'll take us. And if anything happens to you, then I'd really never hear the end of it from your father. Can we also come along? But of course. And Nilu will be thrilled to hear there are more people interested in Lesser Lord Kusanelli. Hmm. Looking at the time, it's been 22 fucking minutes. Good God. Ah, so. Exposition episode, I guess. See you next time. We're gonna meet Nilu. Thanks for watching, and bye!